We hope that Kanye is begging to get on our guest list and he can't. <laughs> he wants to come in one of your parties. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna not let him in. We'll let him in. <laughs> Did that happen to you? Were you denied access to Kanye's party? <laughs> no. You sound like you have a vengeance. We're gonna let Oprah Winfrey in, but not Kanye. <laughs> So the last time we saw you in the UK, you hit the UK in the middle of the worst snowstorm we've had in decades. How was that for you? Fun. I mean, I've never seen that much snow ever, but uh, I got tired of it really quick. Yeah, it was a pain in the ass, really. We got stuck in Leith and, uh, you know. But luckily we made every gig. Didn't can't, we weren't pussies. Do you, do you like, enjoy playing in the UK? Of course. Yeah, loads of fun. Yeah, I mean, every time we come back, you just kind of like, you have to pick something different to do like on your off time because like, you can't, you know, you have to, like last time I like went and saw the tourist stuff, this time I'm just going to go act like I live here. Just wander around and yeah. drink back fast. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys you are based in Austin, Texas, so for the rest of the world that's just, uh, they know it is it's the venue for South by Southwest, what's it like being a resident here? It's like a lot of Mexican food restaurants, uh, riding your bike around. Yeah, lots of lots of bike bike lanes. You know, it's really bike friendly. Uh, pedestrians, uh, you want to be outside all the time. The weather's so great. The sun's always shining. Dog parks everywhere. You know. <laughs> I want to take take you guys way back to it in the early days when you first got What first got you interested in music? Like, was there any special moments? I mean, my dad played the drums, so that's kind of why I started playing the drums. And Elliot, he was kind of an inspiration as well. Good drummer. Well, I can't remember why I wanted to play. I think I just like... Your girlfriend don't do it? No, no, I mean, I was like 12, and I, my mom wanted me to take piano lessons, and I was like, no, I want to do drums, and then one thing led to another, and uh, yeah, here I am. <laughs> so, is there any inspirational figures like, from your that you thought, yeah? Well, my uncle, like, was a, he kind of like wrote some songs and had them published, and he encouraged me and my two cousins to, to start a band. So that's what we did when we were 13. And uh, you know, Nirvana was our main inspiration. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, just grab this bag. Is all I need to do. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's right. Oh, she's gonna join us. Sure. Should we do it? Sure, we can get her in the shop. Is this Beastie Boys? <laughs> they were hardcore punk. No, I know. I really think it is. Yeah, so. I think it's Heart Attack, man. It's a good timing for Alex to be in. I was just gonna ask about the whole. But the, initially, the band kind of settled around daily and a revolving door of members. So, how did you guys all come together and settle where he's on now? I met Elliot when I was 17 uh, from our work. He worked right down the street from me and he used to always come to where I work and get free like Red Bulls and beers from our fridge. And uh, then one day we were just like, hey, want to be in the band? <laughs> so I started playing with him. Well, no, I said, our, she asked me how it was going and I said, our bass player just quit. And she was like, oh, I play bass. And I was like, okay. And she was like, I'm going out of town for two weeks and I'll call you. I didn't believe. I was like, yeah, right. But two weeks later, she emailed me, hey, I'm back. <laughs> and I started playing and then we got one of my best friends on guitar, but he's not here anymore. And Daniel joined us shortly after. Your gun is digging into my hip. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's well, been they... pretty much, uh, well, you know, I, I went to high school with Elliot and uh, well, I moved to Austin and then their drummer quit. And, I guess I was the first guy he called, and I said, sure. Right place, right time. Well, uh, you know, it's destiny. <laughs> and you know, insane technical ability as well. Sure. She can clearly demonstrate it. So wait, the, the album, the Color Trip, is due on Valentine's Day this Monday. So are you guys are excited for the release of it? Yeah, yeah it makes I'm really a great excited. gift. <laughs> great gift. Your girlfriend will love it. Great gift for Valentine's. So how are you guys feeling about the, the album now? It's, uh, Finally finished, ready to go after all these months. Years. Yeah, it's, it was cool. We saw it for the first time the other day. You know, it was like really it was like exciting. seeing your your child being born. <laughs> Except for less disgusting. Yeah. Less, but there less, was a 
lot of blood. <laughs> Yeah, I saw those pic- I saw those pictures on Facebook of holding yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was totally exciting. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, it looks awesome, actually. I mean, we didn't make it. I mean, the record itself looks really cool. The green, clear stuff, or whatever. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about the recording process? How, how long ago was that now? A year. Yeah, it's been a really long time. Yeah, we were pretty much in in the studio for the entire month of February last year. And uh, we went in there with like only like three or four songs complete, and it came out with like 15 songs, uh, all of which are on the all the extras are on the Japanese version. So you might want to order that one too. <laughs> they both make great gifts. <laughs> so even the he tells a bit about the recording process itself. Like how did that work? Like did you record? Do you have like your own studio or no? We recorded at the Bubble in Austin, and. Um Computer Boy was the engineer. Yeah, he's a friend of ours and he's really cool to work with because he also had some really great ideas that we ended up yeah, he's, always he's pretty him. Hair. He, uh, yeah, he has great hair. Yeah, we just, you know, we just kind of uh, spent all day in the studio tinkering about until... A lot of stuff would just come out of us messing around. <laughs> um, we'd go in there with ideas of what we were going to do and then, you know, you'd get bored or antsy want to just fuck around with shit so you start making noise and playing around and then you're like oh wait that sounds cool let's record it real quick yeah and uh we, we like that's not how that wind yes, chimes it is. wind chimes and like weird voices and feedback and like we were able to play it on a keyboard and, uh, oh yeah they put i sang every note on a guitar and then i think <clears> put it into a midi keyboard and we play my vocals and that made it onto the song <laughs> So that was pretty fun. A lot of good studio trickery. Is that something that you kind of enjoy doing as well? Isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It was a ton of fun. It's cool to get to do that stuff. The album itself has got a lot of really, kind of really nice like tonal qualities and stuff like that. Is that like the idea behind it? You just want to kind of play it out with different noises and textures rather than like hearing everything really clearly. Like, like it's quite kind of a blended approach. Yeah, I and mean, we like. I mean, at least I experimented with like. The way I sang, uh, like I tried to sing like a Japanese girl in some songs. <laughs> Seriously, I know that's no bad thing. Yeah. Once I was doing my vocals, and <laughs> Elliot goes, "Pretend you're a Japanese schoolgirl riding to school on a giant cat." <laughs> and I was like, "Hold on," and then I did it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so adds to the psychedelic quality somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we did the, we did like backwards vocals and like backwards guitars and you know all that jazz. Used a lot of drum samples. Uh, I think we were kind of like you know trying to go for a little Lil Wayne type thing on one song and uh, just kind of uh, taking the music we would want to hear ourselves really. So you're renowned for your live shows. You've been making quite a splash in the blogosphere as well. So when you play live, do you try and recreate? Like what you've done on record, or is every show different? You can improvise. Or... Some songs right now, like have to have a track, a backing track, but that's because we don't have the fourth member anymore. But you know, we don't know what we're gonna do about that yet. <laughs> but uh, I guess it just depends on what kind of mood we're in. Sometimes Daniel will barf on the drums. <laughs> sometimes I throw uh, up a lot in the band. Yeah. Sometimes we'll throw. The guitars at each other. Like, it also depends on the audience too. I feel like when the audience is more receptive, we get more playful and we'll get crazier. But well, I don't know. Sometimes it seems very stiff, and the audience is standing really far away, and it's hard to get so playful. We just were like, maybe we should just do this and get off the stage. <laughs> it's also kind of hard to rock before 10 p.m. <laughs> yeah, the shows are too early. The loudness here. level. <laughs> in Austin, we usually play at midnight. So, do you do you find like you're playing with like Galaxy 500 tonight? Or you, you play with the Wedding Present, the Dandy Warbles as well. Is there any other bands that really wish you could play with them? Oh my gosh, tons. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to personally play with uh, like Dinosaur Junior or something like that. That would be cool. Just I, putting it out there. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Don't Mainly see. just because I'd get to see them night after night after night. I've only seen them twice. You know. <laughs> My friend's band toured with them. Maybe I can one day. It's on the wish list. So what have you? Are these guys coming? 
we are not headlining tonight, but you guys coming back to the UK for a headline tour perhaps later in the year once the album's. Yeah, probably. Maybe, hopefully. hopefully yeah. If people if you'll want us. us. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll come back for the festivals and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's what they're talking. That's what they're telling us now. That's the line they're feeding us. You're on the albums on AC30. How did the relationship with that label develop? They saw us play. Out of bar. Yeah, they wind us and dined us, you know, they, they got me really drunk before the gig and then we showed you a contract. Yeah, well no, that we didn't actually we didn't sign the contract until like six months later. But uh that's when uh all hell broke loose. What? No, oh, it's been awesome, they're amazing. Yeah, they're funny guys. And they are very nice and cool. <laughs> hey Robin! <laughs> hey Duncan! Duncan. <laughs> hey, it's more <laughs> losers. <laughs> so you're, you're in a really kind of album show, you're in a really positive place at the moment, so where, where do you guys hope to be in say like a, a year's time, two years time? We hope that Kanye is begging to get on our guest list and he can't. <laughs> he wants to come to one of your parties. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna not let him in. Did that happen to you? Were you denied access to Kanye's party? No. <laughs> you sound like you have a binge. We're gonna let Oprah Winfrey in, but not Kanye. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. All right. <laughs>